Welcome to Helping Hands with your hosts, John Neiman and Judy Ritchie. Hello, and welcome to Helping Hands. This is our opportunity to let you in the community know how you can lend a helping hand to a program or an agency in need. I'm Judy Ritchie, Community Advocate. I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center and welcome to our wonderful July edition of Helping Hands. As you can tell by our wonderful set uh, designed by Harnix, we're talking patriotism, we're talking red, white, and blue, we're talking the 4th of July parade, which you'll see us again this month as it runs uh, the entire month of July. We're so glad that you could join us here. Um, once again, we always have to start by thanking our sponsor, and that would be Aurora Healthcare. Um, we're so grateful for them. Because of them, we are on the air. This is our 15th year on the air uh, for Helping Hands, and with their support, we can reach out into the community. We can talk about volunteerism, talk about volunteering opportunities. Where can you see us? Where can you hear us? You can see us on uh, Life TV. You can hear us on 101.9 FM. Also go to oshkoshmedia.org for the schedule of not only our show, which airs five of the seven days of the week, but also the other wonderful fine shows on Life TV. Now, if you've been counting the time, you've been thinking, it must be time for that Unsung, Unsung Hero. Hero again. It's the month of July, and we do it every other month. And so, yes, you are right. Uh, it's time for the Community Unsung Hero Award. Right. And we had a, a great visit when we did that. We met not only our unsung hero, but uh, a young man that sort of considers him his hero. And um, when you go to tape, you're gonna find a wonderful match, um, someone that, uh, a young man and the, his mentor who've been together for four and a half years. And what a change our unsung hero has made in that young man's life. So if we've piqued your interest right now, take a look at our clip and you'll see where we went and who our July Community Unsung Hero is. Hi there, Judy and John from Helping Hands here to surprise our July recipient of the Community Unsung Hero. We're at the Oshkosh Boys and Girls Club. And the volunteer that we're going to be recognizing is a 25-year volunteer. Um, and we're fortunate today to meet both he and his match in the mentoring program. Hi there. Hi there. Hi. Hi there. We are John and Judy from Helping Hands Show on Oshkosh Media. And in partnership with Oshkosh Media and friends of Oshkosh Media and our show, we do a Community Unsung Hero Award. Okay. Started in March. Okay. So we had a March recipient, okay. a May recipient, and now we have a July okay. recipient. And he's dressed appropriately for it. Unsung Hero is a person who has volunteered not only for a length of time, but is so committed to the programs. So you do the mentoring program, the Lego program, wine feast, and how many other things? And by the way, this is Glenn. I'm gonna give you this because I'm gonna read this to you. Okay. Uh, and he was in on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This, this, this is Eric. Eric. And, yeah. and he was in on it. Set up. Yeah, <laughs> it was hard to set you up too. <laughs> But Carlia yeah. was really good at That's it. That's why she was so insistent last week. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a certificate of appreciation that acknowledges Glenn Doherty, has been recognized as our Oshkosh Community Unsung Hero for the month of July in 2018. And we do this in conjunction with the friends of Oshkosh Media, Oshkosh Media, which is the wonderful crew here, and our show Helping Hands, oh, which you. is based on volunteerism in our community. So we congratulate you for being our unsung hero. Well, thank you. A little bag of goodies for you. Well, friends of Oshkosh Media have a gift card for you. Oh, well, thank you. And this is all the applause that you get because <laughs> you've been doing this for 25 years in a variety of manners, whether it's Wine Feast or the Legos or the mentoring program. Oh, thank you. So this is for you. Oh, thank you. 
My goodness. Eric, do you have anything you want to say? Not really. Really? <laughs> so <laughs> what does... The man a few, the man yeah. a few, yeah. the man a few <laughs> words. <laughs> but Eric, um, put the mic over a little closer to this. But that. Eric, you you've been a match with him for four and a half years. That's a very long time in your lifespan. Right. And why do you keep letting him into your life? Uh, he's just a positive influence. Just the fact that he's there for me, even for the short time that I've uh, been with him, like every Wednesday. Yeah, he's just been really good. What Carlina told us was that he's probably the one male consistent figure in your life the last few years? Correct. And how does that feel? Feels good. So, Carlia, you jump on in here. Because <laughs> to do this, sometimes we have to trick people. So Carlia was really good. She nominated you. We take nominations for this award, and um, she nominated you. Carlia, what would you like to say? I just want to say that we greatly appreciate um, everything you do for the Boys and Girls Club. I know, especially for me, being the mentoring coordinator, just seeing your relationship grow with Eric over the past four and a half years has been huge because, like you and Eric have said, you've been that one consistent positive role model in his life. No matter what's going on, he knows that he can depend on you, and I just appreciate everything that you've put in through mentoring, through Lego, Wine Feast, and all the different hats that you've, I guess, worn over the past how many years you've been a part of our organization as a volunteer. So, Can thank you. Can you tell us about the Legos? Lego Robotics um, is part of, uh, it, it's, it's a much larger international program, but we started that at the club, I want to say, I think five years ago. And it's aimed more towards, more towards middle school, uh, what was it, eight, I think eight to 14, I believe, is the age group. Um, and so there's usually about 10 kids, and what we do is a, a couple different facets of the program. One, the part they all like is they build Lego robots. And there's a big table, and every year it's a different theme. And they have to do tasks with this robot. So they have to learn how to program it, how to build it. And uh, that, that's one part of it. Okay. Um, and then the other part of it is they actually have to do a project every year. And the project is basically around the theme. Like last year, a lot of it was about water conservation and about water. So um, they built um, rain barrels. Last year, uh, they've done rain barrels. They've done, uh, we've done different things. It doesn't okay. have to be so, so. Yeah, Eric was on the team one year, and stuff. He was their main programmer. So, are you competing, then? Yes, we compete every year. So, what happens is um, there's like a regional competition, and so the Boys and Girls Club. Um, it varies. We've been to Sheboygan. We've been up to Appleton. Um, last year, we went down to Milwaukee. Um, oh. It kind of depends on what works out. So, okay. well, generally, you start in August. And till that, you really don't know what you're doing. They release it, everybody gets it at the same time. You start in August, usually we compete in November. Um, not last year, but two years ago, we made past the first level and went to the second level of competition. Well, congratulations, and good So that for was you. two years ago. But to be honest with a lot of it, it's not about winning. It is about giving these kids an opportunity to do something that they wouldn't normally do. Um, most of the most of the middle schools in Oshkosh have a Lego team, but generally it's run kind of through the school system. Mm -hmm. um, probably a lot more parent involvement, and so we have a little less of that here, but very nice and, you know, to some people that have donated money to the clubs that have allowed us to buy the Legos, every year have a team. We've had very good support from that standpoint, so that's really nice because it's, unfortunately they're not cheap. Yeah. These, these robot kits are about three, four hundred dollars wow. each, and so the club is very fortunate that we've been able to do that. So what a I, great experience for you to yeah, give the kids. Yeah, yeah. My too. wife and I basically have been doing most of it for the last few years, and my children who are grown now have helped out on and off. My son um, has helped out, and so it's very nice. It's a labor of love to some degree. So. And then you also help out with wine fees. Yeah, that's been that goes back like I don't know how many years. <laughs> That goes back like lots of years. Uh, my wife actually used to work here. And so, and she was actually, so that kind of started when she worked here. She's worked here a couple of different times. One is full time doing something. And then, oh, what was that? Probably four or five years she worked here part time as well. Oh. And so we've been involved on and off in various different things this club for years. So, well, we're here to let you know that we appreciate it and we appreciate you. And for our audience, this is Glenn and he's our community unsung hero for the month of July 2018. Thank you very, Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
That was exciting to see. When you tape it, you're in the midst of taping it. You don't get to see everything, the expressions on their faces, what they're doing. I just loved watching him, Glenn, because he was so humble. He it just uh, he looked down when people were talking about him because he just volunteering is a way of life for him. Mm -hmm. Well, and I enjoyed watching Eric and. I mean, I was aware a little bit more than you were probably of, of some circumstances, but when you looked at him and the fact that he was in on the secret and to watch as you announced, okay. as you announced to um, Glenn that he was the unsung hero, Eric had that shy smile on his face and he, he felt so good about Glenn getting that recognition and the part that didn't get recognized in there, Eric had a birthday and they had a special lunch together that day. So I, again, what Glenn has done for that young man mm -hmm. just goes far beyond what was expected of him. And I also have to say special thanks to Carlia because I contacted Carlia, she gave us some nominations, we looked at them. And we saw 25 years for Glenn. That was a key right there. But Carlia was able to do some finagling of schedules and sharing information with us. And that's what really helped and made it key was to have all of the information there. Also thanks to Bemis, uh, where Glenn works, because uh, Bemis is a big supporter of volunteerism and programs in our community, but that day we taped, was a hot day. It was a hot and day. And Bemis' air conditioners were down, so Glenn was working from home. So it all worked out so perfectly for us uh, to get that done as a surprise. And the main thing is a surprise. It's right. nice to catch them where they volunteer with what they're doing. Well, and the fact that he was there so humble, um, he He makes such an impact on so many people. Yes, his wife worked there, got him started. But if you l listen throughout that, you know, his family has been involved. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't say in here, but he's gotten other people involved. And 25 years commitment from anybody to a volunteer program is a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think as we get a little further into this discussion, some of the other things that he's been involved with and where he's made a difference also. Right, just very, very uh, interesting to listen to the story and to listen to the support of the Boys and Girls Club. At this point in time, we're gonna take a break um, and then we're gonna come back and talk a little more about the Boys and Girls Club, what Glenn actually does at the Boys and Girls Club as a volunteer, and also some events that are going on in our community uh, for the month of July. So stay tuned and we'll be right back for our second segment of our July edition of Helping Hands. It's not a charity, it's more than a charity. It's about helping people we live with. It's about being the type of person that the six-year-old version of ourselves wanted us to be. It's about community and looking out for one another. It's about money, yes, but it's so much more than money. It's about friendship and common values. It's about opening doors when others are slammed shut. It's about giving kids a place to be kids and growing up knowing they live in a community that cares about them. It's about making sure that everyone gets to see the dentist because we want to make sure that they have every last tooth in those smiles. Ultimately, that's it. It's about the smiles, old smiles and new smiles. It's about us, all of us, our community living united because great things happen when we live united. Will you join us? Hi, we're back. This is the July edition of Helping Hands. Um, if you saw our first segment, you saw 
our community unsung hero for the month of July, Glenn Doherty, with who volunteers at the Boys and Girls Club in Oshkosh. We're just going to continue a little more talk because we didn't get everything in the first segment that we needed to to talk about um, volunteering and Glenn and being an unsung hero. The other thing that fascinated me with, with that was something that we've learned all along is if you have a family member working somewhere or volunteering somewhere, they're pretty good at corralling the rest of the family to come in. And, and Glenn did say that his wife worked at the Boys and Girls Club. That's how he got started. And then his children also work there. So we talk about family volunteering, which is really big today. Right. It's a key pop word today. It's family volunteering. Let's do it together. But Glenn's been doing it for 25 years. He said his kids are older now, so they've been doing it for quite a while also. Right. And one of the things that Carlia also said was that with um, Glenn's wife, she works for Winnebago County uh, at this time, if Eric is having a bad day and Glenn isn't available, he goes over and shares the good or the bad with Glenn's wife and to have that comfort level established says volumes for what that, you know, Glenn and his entire family have done for this young man. Um, when we talk about how many hours that Glenn puts in, he doesn't count them, and he doesn't like other people counting them, but it's a minimum of an hour a week with Eric. It is four or five or more hours a week with, during robotics, um, or Legos, uh, to work with like 10 kids mm -hmm. and all the other things going on in life. A lot of people don't do that. And for him, this is a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And it's important for our audience to know about the Great Futures Mentoring. The time that you give is what you set with the person you're mentoring. So Glenn has been working with Eric for four and a half years, but the time commitment is not as great as the quality of the time that they spend. So this really is a time to plug um, the Great Futures Mentoring Program at the Boys and Girls Club right. because th they're looking for people just to be like a big brother, a big sister, a mentor, to guide, to show. The time commitment is what you want to give. They're not telling you what to give, but it's the quality that you're giving, which is really, truly important to the children. Right, and it's four hours a month. And you and the youth decide that time together. Mm -hmm. You decide what type of activities. You decide, you know, amongst yourselves. And there's a plan that is, um, they try to work on, that follows through to graduation from the club, graduation from school. and. What I think is really neat is with some of the backers of the Boys and Girls Club, the scholarships that get um, made available, financial assistance that's made available for them. Mm -hmm. And um, at my service club meeting just recently, we had it brought up of some of the um, needs at the Boys and Girls Club, and several of the ladies expressed interest in the afternoon tea for the young girls that they thought that would be a fun activity to do. And that's been around to right. teaching manners, teaching etiquette, teaching social skills. Um, a lot of the different groups like to do that. The library does a wonderful job with that too. I, I think it's great to have unique programs. And this also is our chance um, to talk about some of the needs of the Boys and Girls Club. I think we have a couple slides to talk about right. what their needs are, which is a great PR thing because Glenn is our recipient, so let's talk about the Boys and Girls Club and what they could use, what they need. Okay, some of the things that uh, they look at are having the mentors. One thing that I, when I saw it on the list, it was kind of why, and then all of a sudden it dawned on me. Grief support. Mm -hmm. And so many of these kids experience losses in their life. Sometimes it's, it's by a loved one passing away but it can be other losses with the things that go on in families. We all have support systems. Some of these kids don't. And so that's where that grief support group comes in. Um, assisting with special events, be it the wine feast, um, there's a cornhole tourney uh, that's done over at the Leech. And um, 
the uh, turkey trot at Thanksgiving and a whole bunch of other things. Of course, Molly from Aurora mm -hmm. is very involved with turkey trot also. Um, and there's family events, be it the back to school fair or a uh, Halloween party, Thanksgiving dinner, a Christmas party, uh, Youth of the Year, family nights, all sorts of things there. Or there can be group projects that are uh, just a one-shot deal or collecting supplies. So let's talk about donating because if people can't donate their time physically because people are stretched um, in our world today because they're not only volunteering by me at Aurora, they're volunteering at Mercy, they're at the library, they're at the pain. Um, how can people give monetarily or what are the needs? Well, money is always needed. We know that. Uh, but they have a, a very long wish list and it's, it's not that it's so overwhelming, but it's fitting certain niches and board games, anything from uh, what's good for the, the really young kids on up through, you know, the, well into the teens. So, you know, that in card games, uh, the game room, they're always needing to have um, exercise DVs, DVDs, um, headphones, pool sticks. I don't know if they're using them for jousting too, but they need pool sticks periodically. In the learning center, it's any type of school supplies you can imagine, uh, and calculators. And Legos are always a big one, uh, both for use in uh, the learning center itself, but for the Lego group. And they have a special art room. And again, all the types of supplies. And as you get closer to Christmas, on that same list shows up wrapping paper or gift bags and things because they're part of that uh, mm -hmm. holiday toy drive. So if you think of your own household and what you use in your household with your own children or grandchildren, that's what they need. When we were there taping, um, it was right after lunch and the gym was just filled with all the kids and they were checking out games and board games to play at the table. So um, if you're interested in more information about this, you can contact myself um, with my contact information. It's always at the end of the show. Or you can drop the items off at Aurora, uh, and I'll make sure that Carlia does get them for the Boys and Girls Club. Or you can go straight to the Boys and Girls Club and drop off the items yourself. One thing when you're dropping things off at the Boys and Girls Club, it's important to know that there is a security system. It's the exact same security system that is in the school district. So you need to be buzzed into the building. And it's not to keep you out. It is to protect the kids that are participating there. But it will be a joy for you just to go into the building, especially during the summer, because they have a program from three on up through high school, and there are lots and lots of kids there. It really does bring you a lot of joy, and it might get you out to say, hey, I want to volunteer at the Boys and Girls Club. On the screen right now for our audience is um, how to become a Great Futures mentor in their program. Um, Carlia is the person to call for our radio audience. It's 233-1414 or it's C-A-R-L-E-A-L at, at B-G-C-O-S-C-H dot org. A good chance to connect with Carlia. Um, we really want to support the Boys and Girls Club because we do a lot uh, good for our youth in our community. And we also just want to say thank you again to Glenn Doherty for being our July community unsung hero going to change the topic now and talk about how everybody can be a hero and that's talking about blood drives and we need blood all year round and we over winter we talked about people not being able to get out in donate blood we also talked about the accidents that happen that make people needing extra blood well summer people are busy going on vacation people are out there are more outdoor accidents you know, kids playing outside, uh, the, anything from the swimming to some of the other that actually draw blood. Um, and so the need is always there mm -hmm. and it just, it grows. And just because you've given blood, it doesn't have an indefinite shelf life. It's only good for so many days and then it can't be used anymore. So it always needs to be replenished. 
and the, the, the need is there. So the next blood drive um, at Aurora Medical Center, thank you, crew, is on Thursday, July 19th. Uh, from 9 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. It's in our first floor conference room. So when you enter the main entrance of the hospital, which you can't miss now because it's all decked out with lots of wonderful plants and everything, so you can't miss it, you just hang a left and you go down the hall. It's right across from our wonderful gift shop. So we ask you to please consider donating blood. Our last blood drive that we did have, they successfully collected 28 units of blood. The other really exciting thing is we did a, a be a match that day for uh, the bone marrow program, and they collected uh, eight people who were matched for that, which is even more exciting. So there's different ways that you can um, volunteer. There's different ways to save lives. We all can be heroes, but donating to the blood drive is a great thing. So uh, blood drive, Aurora, July 19th. 9 a.m. to 1.30, first floor conference room A and B. If you need more information, uh, again, our contact information is at the end of the show. Okay, um, and kids hate to hear it. School's coming up. And so over summer, as you see the sales, start uh, stocking up on school supplies because uh, there'll be the stuff the truck at Shopco, there will be you collect supplies mm -hmm. over by you. Um, the teacher's closet is always looking for things. Boys and Girls Club need the, those same types of supplies. And so, and United Way, well, United Way is behind it, uh, the Stuff the Truck. Stuff the Truck. Plus, <coughs> since Judy brought that up, we do have the date um, for it. So actual, the actual back-to-school fair is Thursday, August 16th at Oshkosh North. They need volunteers two days before to help setting up the tables, help sorting the items, uh, things like that. So if you're interested in that, uh, please let us know and we'll pass your information on. Uh, last year, this group served 1,000 students in our community. And also at the back to school fair, there is a dentist, not that kids want to hear <laughs> a dentist either. There's dentists, there's optical, there's haircuts, there's clothes, there's lots and lots of items to help all the kids mm -hmm. get ready for back, back to school. Backpacks and everything, right. And you know, it's sad, and we were able to provide for our own kids, but there's families and, you know, mom and dad can both be working and still struggling to make ends meet. So the things that we can donate to the back to school fair, uh, that we can donate any time during the year, are so helpful. And they right. make, again, something that seems so little to us can make a huge difference to someone else. Think about that, 1,000 students and what they need. That should get your mind rolling on donating for that. Well, guess what? Our time is winding down for our July edition of Helping Hands. We're so glad that you could be joining us. We're hoping that you have a wonderful and safe summer. I'm John Neiman with Aurora Medical Center. And Judy Ritchie, Community Advocate. Thank you for joining us.